You can see a man or a woman with a great amount of knowledge, proper knowledge, theological knowledge, reformed knowledge. Maybe even quote the entire book of Romans. And yet, have a sense in which they are not alone with God. They do not spend time alone with God. One psychologist back in, I think, the 70s is probably one of the few things I've ever agreed with with regard to psychology. He said this. He said, busy is not of the devil. It is the devil. And so many people today are so busy. So many Christians are so busy that they can not pull away. And because they do not pull away, they never develop what Paul is talking about in 1 Thessalonians, and that is the ability to pray without ceasing. And here we see our Lord in a secluded place. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. But I know this. As I've read through pious and godly men and women down through the history of the church, I have discovered that in many things they have differed. In personality, not in the fundamentals of the faith, but in some of the secondary issues of the faith, in personality, in lifestyle, the places where they lived, the economic status that they attained, all of it very different. But I do find one common denominator among all those who were mightily used of God, and that is their ability, or they saw the need to pull away and be alone with God as we see our Savior here right now in this text. And this is not only for the preacher, it's not only for the Bible student, it's for everyone, everyone. It is for the mother at home. It is for the father overwhelmed at work. It is for the student who feels like they can't go on under this kind of pressure. It is for everyone to spend time alone with God. And it is that thing that marks, that marks. After a while, you can just tell it. This person spends time with God. And there's no way around it. No way around it. Now, it says, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. He was praying. You know, I've heard people say, I'd give anything to have been there when, Paul's preached on Mars, when Paul preached on Mars Hill. I would have given anything to be there at the giving of the law. Well, if I have to admit, I would... If I could have been anywhere, I would have wanted to behold my Savior dying for my sins. But second only to that, it would be not even to hear my Savior teach, but to hear and watch Him pray. Isn't it astounding that His disciples came to Him and said, teach us to pray? This is something when I'm doing a pastor's conference or something, I will ask the pastors, has anyone ever come up to you after having watched your life of prayer and asked you, would you please teach me to pray like you pray? Jesus was a man of prayer. Miss Bethany Jones, the wife of Martin Lloyd-Jones, says, you can't understand my husband as a an evangelist or an expositor, unless you understand, first of all, he was a man of prayer. I'm telling you, and I want you to listen to me, all of you, especially those that are thinking about going into ministry, listen to me. This is not an option. This is not something to add on. You will not be useful or as useful Apart from prayer, mountains come down and are cast in the sea through prayer. Strongholds are destroyed through prayer. The battle is won in prayer. You can be, you can be pretty, you can be eloquent, you can be clever, you can have all your things laid out in a row, you can be a marvel in the pulpit with regard to people saying, wasn't that quaint? Wasn't that beautiful? Wasn't that catchy? Didn't that? But they won't be saying, were we not transformed? Were we not transformed? Did our hearts not burn within us? It's prayer, brothers. 
Sisters, it's prayer. It's prayer. It's prayer. And it's more prayer. Now, notice the response of those who followed him. Verse 36, Simon and his companions searched for him. They found him and said to him, everyone is looking for you. You know, in a very, very small way, I almost think I can see into this passage because of things that have happened in my own life. Br Brother Paul, why are you praying? Don't you know there are needs out here? It's, it's, it's time for you to, I mean, it's just, it's 10 more minutes and you're supposed to teach. There's people out here who need counseling. Don't you care? You're just being here alone with God? What you must understand is what Christ understood. It was His being alone with God that made Him effective when He was with the people. Do you see that? More time with God. More time with God. Not because we want less time with people, but we want that when our time is with people, the power and the grace is multiplied. You see, being alone with God, being alone with God. Now, let's go a little bit further and let's let's go just run over quickly. I want to go to the book of Luke and take you through there for just a moment. Now, brothers and sisters, Luke is an amazing. Well, it's rather amazing. If there's two things, there are several things we can emphasize in the book of Luke. But two things that really stand out for our purpose here. And one is his emphasis on the Holy Spirit. And the other is his emphasis on prayer. And I do not find that unusual that those two things are brought together in the book of Luke. Because there is a direct relationship between, between someone abiding and walking in the power of the Spirit and and prayer. Abiding in prayer, abiding in the word enables one to abide in the spirit, to walk in the spirit, to be led by the spirit. There is a supernatural something to our Christian life. And there's three options. You can pretend it doesn't exist. Secondly, you can pretend that you understand it when you don't. Or three, you can pray so that it become a reality in your life. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was opened. This is magnificent. It's magnificent. You know, usually in the pictures, which I don't approve of, that are drawn of Christ and the baptism, you see Christ being baptized and maybe there's some reference, small movement of the hand or something that would make you think that he was praying. But the whole thing, most people think he was baptized in the spirit came down upon him, but he was baptized. He was praying. How long? What is the interval between the baptism and the prayer? Was it at the same time? We really don't know, but know this. This was a praying man. God in the flesh, but a praying man. A praying man. Praying man. It was his breath. It is what came out of him. And I can say that, that probably not to, well, definitely not to the same degree, but I have been fortunate throughout my life to meet men and women who were this way. It seemed that every breath was a prayer to God. And though the, their names may never be in conference lights, I would presume to say that in glory their names are well known. Because it's not anything to have your name known in a conference. The question that Ravenhill used to tell us was this. Is your name known in heaven?